Australia to get U.S. nuclear submarine technology, part of a new security pact. What does this mean for Canada? This is the Great White North Report. All right, so last month, Australia ditched a French proposal to buy nuclear submarines and instead went with a new U.S.-led nuclear submarine technology as part of a new security pact. This is between the Australians, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Canada, of course, has been left out. It did cause a fear with the, Aust with the French, but why did Australia do it? Well, because the United States has more of a commitment to the Pacific than the French does, as does the UK. And this is a security partnership for the Indo-Pacific that will help Australia acquire nuclear-powered submarines as Chinese influence over the region grows. So this is aimed at a dig at China. There's not going to be any nuclear weapons on these things. Nuclear technology is going to power the submarine so it can stay underwater longer and carry more f equipment and food for the crew. It's a greener technology than, than the original diesel. So Australia is doing this now. Why Canada should do this as well, I think. We should be getting involved. Because let's face it, our Victor we have four, currently we have four Victoria class long range submarines, but they're diesel. They have 48 crew members and they don't, they can't do a heck of a lot right now. They cannot go under thick ice for long periods of time. Now it should be remembered that at one time we were actually looking to buy nuclear submarines. Back in 1987 under the Mulroney government, there was a plan to build 10 to 12 nuclear powered submarines to be stationed in patrol routes in Northeast Pacific, the Arctic and Northwest Atlantic oceans. Due to their greater speed, range and ability to operate underneath the Arctic ice, nuclear submarines were preferred. The goal was to build up a three ocean Navy and assert Canada's and assert Canadian sovereignty over the Arctic waters, as well as enhance contributions to NATO. Now at the time that this way, that the Mulroney government was considering it, Canadians actually approved we're actually in approval of this until the fall of the Soviet Union. Then, then the approval dropped to third. Now the opposition at home, Joe Clark, who was himself a conservative, he felt that Canadian nuclear submarines would upset the balance of power with the Warsaw Pact. And another minister, Wilson, because of the cost, it was going to cost us eight billion dollars at the time. And they pointed out to the steadily increasing size of the federal deficit and debt. Well. <laughs> 30 years later, we're even more debt, and the deficit has increased thanks to reckless liberal spending. Now, the United States were also opposed to this, even though Ronald Reagan himself signed off on the project. The American Navy and government were appalled at what they saw as Canadian military interference aiming at only resolving a Canadian-American sovereignty dispute, because the, the Americans see the Northwest Passage as being international waters, while the Canadian position has always been the Northwest Passage is strictly Canadian. And at the time, we had to go through, secure the transfer of American nuclear technology from Britain to Canada as required by a 1958 Arms Control Export Act. Our Minister of National Defense, Perrin Beatty, was told in no uncertain terms by the U.S. Defense Department and submarine service that a Canadian nuclear submarine program was unnecessary and even unwelcome. Now, like I said, Reagan signed off on it, much to the displeasure of his own government. But at the same time, the Cold War ended. The Soviet Union collapsed, the East, Eastern Bloc the Warsaw Pact split up, and a, a nuclear power navy was seen as something that was too costly at the time. And now we are paying for this, because at the time, those nuclear power submarines would have replaced the Oberon class submarine. The Oberons are a class of submarine that we bought from Britain, and they were in Canadian service from 1965 to 2000. We had three of these. Really good submarine for its time, but woefully out of date. These things were built in Britain, in 62, 65, and 64. We received them in the in the late 60s, and we kept them right up until 1998. 35-plus year submarines. They were obsolete by the mid-80s, and we kept them in service for another 15 years unnecessarily and never actually replaced them. One of them is sitting down in Port, Port Burwell. So that's how badly we've let our defense slip. And what did we replace them with? We replaced them with Victoria-class Upholder. These have been in commission since 1990. So again, we're using 30-year-old submarines to replace a 35-year-old submarine. Now we paid, the Canadian government paid $750 million for obsolete submarines. And it was seen as a bargain, which it is. It was a bargain, but there's been lots of problems with these. There's been fires, engine failures, and they're just not up to snuff. There was a one year, I think it was 2018, where all four submarines were in, heart, in, in port getting fixed and it's going to cost us. We're expecting these submarines to last until 2035. So another 14 years from now, way past their serviceable date. So the 1987 white paper was looking at the sovereignty and security of our Arctic Ocean, not just on land, but at sea. 
and a Canadian nuclear submarine program would have been ideal. It is something that we should have followed up on. So all you'd have to do is look at this map and see where the trade route is. The shorter distance from Asia to Europe is what they're looking at. In their dream since the days of Columbus to find a shorter path to Asia, and that's it. With climate change coming, it's gotten even more attractive. A nuclear submarine program would help in the defense of Canada and North America, supporting Canadian expeditionary deployments and supporting Canada's interest in global maritime stability. Right now, our Navy, we cannot project power overseas with what we have, especially considering we have three oceans to defend. But Canadian nuclear powered submarine in Canadian Arctic waters and North Passage choke points indicates to other states that Canada has the capability to control the water base management in ocean areas claimed by Canada. And it demonstrates to Canadians and non Canadians alike that Canada has the will and capability to assert sovereignty in the seas of the Arctic. That I totally agree with. Like, this is what we need. A nuclear submarine can travel the Northwest Passage under the ice cap from Atlantic Pacific in just 14 days, while it would take a month via the Panama Canal. So we cannot, without them, we cannot exercise our authority in the Arctic within the confines of its sovereign territory. So we're looking at $5 billion would allow Canada to fund the submarine acquisition program and allow us to contribute fairly to our fair share with NATO. Now, $5 billion sounds like a lot of money, but considering how much money we dumped into Afghanistan, and how much money we dump into foreign aid. Afghanistan cost us a total of eight, $18 billion, if not more, while our foreign aid was $6 billion in 2019. And when I talk about foreign aid, I'm talking about giving, we give it to countries like China, North Korea, Iran, also to countries that support terrorism like Pakistan and Saudi Arabia and the Palestinian territories under Hamas, as well as the countries that practice piracy like Somalia and other fun places to be we get we just dump money to without thinking about it the question is why do we need this again it is to assert our sovereignty but also because right now the russians have been upgrading their high arctic bases their air force bases and their naval bases in the in the arctic they are becoming increasingly active in the arctic vladimir putin is trying to recreate the russian empire or the old soviet union empire but he's being very aggressive in his approach but russia is doing what it can also, we have China, who has declared itself a near-Arctic state. They want to build a polar silk road off Canada's north. And they've been trying to buy assets in, in our northern country for years. So if we allow China access to our Northwest Passage, there's going to be a lot of shipping going through there, which is going to be environmentally unfriendly. There's also going to be a lot of Chinese fishing boats in there, poaching illegally. And Canada won't have anything up there capable of stopping them. So this is what I'd like to see. I'd like to see a... Canadian hybrid submarine design. I think we need at least 10 to 12 nuclear submarines. I'd be fine with six. Two in the, two in the Arctic, two in the Pacific, and two in the Atlantic. Because we do have excellent technology that can contribute to these things. But we can use a slowpoke two reactor. And it would help defray the cost if we pitch in with other countries like Japan, Australia, the United States, and the UK. Norway and France. And bring it down to like 1 billion per sub. So that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see us get a... Like to see us upgrade our nuclear our uh, submarine fleet we definitely need nuclear powered submarines developing a nuclear submarine would be in canada's best interest instead of wasting our money and our time we're changing our the names of our streets pulling down statues spending money on for overseas and foreign aid sending our troops off to fight other people's wars we need to stay home and focus on our own security and defense first and what's really necessary for us as canadians and not all these woke culture, critical race theory bullshit. Anyway, any Canadians out there, let me know what you guys think about the about a Canadian nuclear submarine. Is it a good idea or is it a bad idea? Leave comments in the comment section below. Hit the like button or subscribe if you're new to the channel. Until next time, this has been the Great White North Report.